Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm going to show you the annuals, perennials, and shrubs that I have put into this uh, re-landscaping project I have going on. Uh, things I've put into the ground so far with the intent of attracting butterflies uh, into this, uh, what mounts to a very small garden, but I have done, I have lots of varieties already. Of course, these plants will not only attract butterflies, you'll also get uh, other pollinators like bees and uh, hummingbirds and, uh, and that kind of thing with many of these flowers. But this, I wanted to make a video that was very butterfly specific. I have a lot of varieties in here already um, that, that should be good for this during the summer. It's been a super cool spring, and so um, not everything is uh, showing a lot of color uh, at this point, but I wanted to make this video at the time when uh, you would still maybe still be shopping uh, for uh, annuals and perennials and shrubs for your garden space, and it might be interesting to know which ones would attract uh, butterflies into the space. Let's walk around. So I'll start at this container right here. This is a uh, lavender. Pretty much all varieties of lavender are great for uh, butterflies. Uh, various other containers and things here will go past and get to this uh, penstemon. Penstemon, this is a perennial um, right here. Has that, uh, you can almost tell by the shape of that flower that that thing's inviting butterflies into the yard. All varieties of penstemon are, are good for attracting butterflies. Uh, move back on this path a little bit right here and we'll come up to this ageratum right here. I did these from seed uh, in the house. These have colored up a little bit more here. But uh, easy plant. You can find uh, ageratum as bedding plants uh, this time of year. They're great for attracting butterflies. Here's some uh, cosmos. Again, this is another one that's easy to do from seed uh, if you can find the seed this time of year. And uh, they'll bloom pretty much all summer. Uh, here's uh, some some asters, pretty much anything um, that's labeled aster is going to uh, be a, a, a good choice for attracting pollinators uh, into, the, uh, into the garden space. Here's some echinacea that I did from seed or coneflowers. Uh, coneflowers are native to the southeast. Uh, it just hasn't been warm enough. These probably should have developed a little bit more at this point, but uh, we've just barely been in the 80s just a few times at this point, but they'll bloom pretty much all summer once they get started. I'll skip over to here. Um, this is agapanthus right here. That's a white flowering one and uh, there's a blue flowering one. You can see the flowers have opened on these and they have that perfect that shape that your uh, that butterflies are really uh, attracted to. Um, this uh, is another cosmos. There's a white here. There's this little frilly, frilly one right here. Again, these are so easy from seed. If you can find seed for cosmos and uh, great for great for attracting pollinators all summer long to the garden. Had a hard rain the other night, knocked these down a little bit. I'll prune them that back and they'll be back in full bloom in a week or two. Uh, several things in this little space right here. Any salvia, anything in the sage family, this is an annual uh, salvia here. I've got a couple um, perennial salvias in the garden as well. Just great for attracting butterflies um, and hummingbirds. Humming, hummingbirds absolutely love the salvias. Uh, this is a bee balm right here that'll be blooming uh, later in the uh, summer. Great for butterflies. Hibiscus right here. Pretty much anything in the mallow uh, family is great for butterflies and that's going to be, uh, also include okra. If you put okra in your vegetable garden, even if you don't like okra. Okra has a beautiful flower and uh, it attracts uh, lots and lots of butterflies to the garden. This is gara, otherwise known as whirling butterflies. So you know that's a good one. Uh, for attracting them. There's a perennial salvia right here that uh, will come back every year. It's got dark purple uh, flowers on it, but uh, it has not uh, not started flowering yet just because it's been kind of cool. Uh, I've got another uh, annual salvia for my area. This one is um, perennial a little further, a little further south. Uh, there's some scabiosa daisies here, also a good choice. Of course, butterfly bushes. Um, yeah, butterfly bushes aren't showing any color yet, but you can see the uh, the flower buds on them here, uh, about to start showing some color. They're probably not a better plant for uh, butterflies. They can be uh, uh, invasive in some areas of the country, so uh, keep that in mind. There are some new dwarf cultivars that are not uh, invasive. This is uh, these are zinnias right here. There's a pink one and a yellow one and. Right here is an orange one, and these are, uh, these again, something I did from seed that the uh, butterflies absolutely love, and I'll just continue to cut them back occasionally during the summer, and they'll fill out uh, 
right here we have Veronica, and there's not many better perennials for attracting butterflies to your yard uh, than Veronica. Okay, let's, uh, let me back out of here without breaking anything and uh, slide down. Here's another uh, Agapanthus right here that's in flower. Uh, here's a shrub that's really great for butterflies and, uh, and lots of different pollinators is uh, Abelia. This is a Miss Lemon Abelia. There's green foliage and, and variegated foliage Abelias, but they're all great for attracting pollinators to the garden during the summer. It won't start blooming until it's really hot outside and then it'll bloom all summer. Little white bell-shaped flowers on that one. Lantana, really not a better plant for attracting pollinators to the garden than, than Lantana, and I've got several uh, varieties. Uh, there's a uh, Rebeccia here, or uh, Black-Eyed Susans. Black-Eyed Susans are also native, and they can, uh, they're good if you leave the seed heads on them later in the uh, fall, uh, the goldfinches really go crazy for the uh, for the seed heads, so you can get goldfinches as a uh, as a uh, an extra bonus uh, by using black-eyed susans. Uh, if I come back here a little further, there's some sweet alyssum here with these uh, white flowers. Again, uh, great for uh, great for attracting butterflies. I've got some lobelia here. Lobelia is uh, that little blue flower right there. There's blue and white uh, lobelias, even pink uh, lobelias that are great for uh, great for pollinators. We'll slide back around through here. Here's another lantana. And again, these should be at full bloom right now, but it's just been so cool outside. There's a yellow flowering one and a uh, one here that has a kind of an orangish reddish flower on it. I'm gonna turn back around. I did these marigolds, these giant marigolds from seed right here. Marigolds are great. A lot of different purposes people use marigolds in the garden, but my main purpose is to uh, attract pollinators. They're great for that. Here's another salvia. This is a perennial uh, salvia uh, right here. Has this uh, has the white flowers on it right there. Um, a little bit different textured uh, textured plant. That one will flower all summer long, attracting pollinators. I've got another annual to me um, salvia right here, this red one. That's uh, uh, again, this is like a zone nine uh, perennial variety and let's see there's a, a verbena right here pretty much all verbenas are going to be good choices for attracting butterflies uh, into the garden uh, there's some celosia right here that i did from seed uh, another good one uh, i'm going to cross across here a lot of the uh, herbs are going to be good choices i actually plant dill uh, just for butterflies uh, later in the in the season when those bloom uh, butterflies go absolutely crazy for them. Here's some dahlias the, that I did from seed. Everybody loves dahlias, and uh, they're about to flower now, and uh, so so do the uh, butterflies. Uh, okay, uh, I've got in this container right here. These are this is called pentas. Uh, pentas come in whites and reds and pinks, uh, lots of different colors on those. All colors are good for attracting butterflies to the garden. Another thing I do for the butterflies is I let my um, greens uh, go to seed. And so right here, I've got uh, uh, all my uh, flowering, uh, or, or all my uh, leafy vegetables, uh, all these yellow flowers. I'm gonna collect the seed on them, but in the meantime, the butterflies are what's out here uh, pollinating them. They're tiny right now, but I did plant some uh, butterfly weed here that I did uh, from seed and uh, they'll grow quite a bit during the summer and uh, great for uh, some of the uh, butterfly varieties like to lay their eggs uh, on those. If I come over to here, uh, I've got some uh, uh, leucanthemum or uh, you know, any leucanthemum or Shasta daisies, any of these uh, are going to be great for attracting butterflies uh, to the uh, garden. And then if we come over here, there's one more uh, variety of Cosmos right there. So by no means is this even a, the start of a list of things that will attract butterflies into your yard. This is just the things that I've put in uh, here in uh, only the last couple months or so. And it's something I do think about uh, when I'm putting plants uh, in place. I'm try I would love to, uh, if you can hear the birds in the background, I'm trying to attract uh, birds into the space. It covers up the, uh, I'm in an urban area of Raleigh, North Carolina, and it covers up the uh, urban noise uh, to listen to all these birds. And, uh, and I'm trying to attract butterflies and of course hummingbirds a little later in the season and all types of pollinators uh, into this space. But I wanted to go through what I have put in so far uh, for butterflies. 
Thanks very much for watching this video.